Well, welcome to the Plant-Based Eating for Health show. My name is Kathleen Gage, and today I'm going to talk about the three Ps of a plant-based diet, which is plan, prep, and prepare. Right now, with the economy going crazy, with groceries going through the roof, uh, there are a lot of people that are complaining about the prices of eggs, they're complaining about the price of meat, they're complaining about the price of virtually everything. And there's one simple solution, stop eating eggs and stop eating any, any animal-based products. And I mean that very sincerely. And in today's episode, I'm going to give you some tips on how you can actually save on your grocery bill, how you can save on your medical bill, and how you can live a healthier life. Are you ready to live the life you deserve? Do you want to feel vibrantly healthy and reach your optimal weight without dieting while being kind to animals and the planet? Then you're, you're in the right place at the right time. Get ready to hear from doctors, nutritionists, experts, and everyday men and women committed to creating a powerful life in mind body and soul through ethical food choices. Welcome to Plant-Based Eating for Health with your host, certified plant-based nutritionist, Kathleen Gage. Um, with the egg prices literally going through the roof, I've seen um, some places they're charging as much as $9, $10 for a dozen. That's pretty expensive. And it's not just the short-term expense that you want to look at. It's the long-term expense also. The long-term expense is what is it doing to your energy? What is it doing to your health? What is it doing to your health care bill? And so my recommendation is to really look at what kind of life you want to create for yourself through the foods that you consume. Lately, I've been listening to the works of Neil Donald Walsh. I was introduced to his works, oh, probably 25 years ago, easily 25 years ago. And I'm going through the process right now of listening to his books on audio and started with Conversations with God, the first, uh, the second volume, the third volume, and I, I got to the fifth volume. And what I found interesting is in each volume, in each book, he talks about sentient beings. He also talks about if you put dead energy into your body, how do you expect live energy to come out? And that is so true. Many people say we're all connected. We're all one. Uh, they, they're very spiritual on the one hand. And then on the other hand, they put dead energy into their body. The reality is, is that until you release any animal and dairy out of your diet, you probably cannot get to the deepest level of focus, meditation, yoga, whatever it may be that you could possibly get to. And I speak from personal experience. I was 64 when I went uh, plant-based initially, and then I went vegan. And I'm coming up very shortly on my 69th birthday. So it's we're coming up on five years of being vegan. When I first went plant-based, I did it for inflammation. I was having some inflammation issues, read quite a bit of information that if I got rid of dairy primarily and possibly meat, that I could minimize my inflammation. And I got the book Eat to Live by Dr. Joel Furman, which I highly recommend. And after reading that book, I realized that if I switch to a diet of whole food, plant-based foods, I probably would start feeling better very quickly. At that point, I was about 45 pounds heavier than I am right now. And I was real sluggish. I didn't have a lot of energy, not very focused. And I thought, well, I'll give it a try for seven days. So for seven days, 100%, I committed to not eating any animal or dairy, still not connecting the dots on the fact that this was going to impact my spiritual well-being and my alignment with my commitment to taking care of animals. Uh, because for many years, we've done rescue animals, all of our pets are rescues, um, and they have found their forever home. So there was kind of a disconnect that I had not yet connected the dots on. And so I gave it a shot for seven days. And I thought, okay, I'll see how I feel after seven days. Within two days, I was already feeling incredibly, incredibly well. I, I felt much better than I had been. Within seven days, not only did I feel better, I lost about five pounds. Uh, I was doing running at the time, but I was getting a lot of aches and pains, especially in my calves. 
And within seven days, I wasn't experiencing that pain. And it was really kind of bizarre. So I thought, okay, I'll give it another seven days and see how I feel. Same thing happened in the next seven days, I dropped more weight. And what's interesting is I had given up on diets. I wasn't doing this as a, as a diet by any stretch of the imagination. And the weight just started melting off. And my energy started increasing. Uh, my recovery time was getting better. So that's when I decided, okay, maybe I should make a lifestyle choice. And within about three months, I dropped 38 pounds, was feeling great, was looking great, was had more energy. And I swore off meat and dairy for an indefinite period of time. The day that I committed to this for the rest of my life, and yes, I do mean for the rest of my life, whether the rest of my life is six months or it's 60 years, who knows? Um, I doubt that it'll be 60 years, but I was at the grocery store and as I was walking by the meat department to go to another department, I literally stopped in my tracks and I felt the pain and suffering that the animals go through. I had not up to that point connected the dots. I seriously had never really realized how much pain and suffering there was in animal processing to get all the steaks, all the pork chops, all the chicken wings, all of the animal-based products that were in the grocery store. I had not connected the dots on how much pain and suffering there is. And today I know there's a lot of pain and suffering and that's one reason I won't put that into my body. It was in that moment that I went from being a plant-based eater to being a vegan. And that sent me on a journey and a trajectory that I have not yet finished. I, I will continue to research. I'll continue to read books. I'll continue to watch documentaries and videos to continue reminding myself what the truth of the matter is. But I digress. We're here to talk about lowering your grocery bill. A lot of people are under the mistaken notion that eating plant-based is actually, or I should say eating vegan is more expensive than eating the SAD diet, standard American diet. And the reality is it's less expensive if you eat a whole food plant-based diet, because basically what you're consuming are vegetables, fruits, beans, legumes, lentils, nuts, things of that nature. When you eat food as close to nature as possible, and you may not be able to get organic, so I'm not here to say you have to eat organic. If you can, that's the optimal. However, if you can't, switching from animal and dairy products to a diet filled with vegetables, greens, uh, the colors of the rainbow, switching to uh, a non-dairy milk like almond milk or oat milk would be a much better choice than dairy milk. Um, and then beans, legumes, lentils, you can get those in the bulk department and nuts. You can get that in the bulk department of many grocery stores. Now, I also know, and this I learned in my time of being a vegan, that there are areas that are actually redlined and they cannot get access to those kind of foods. So I do understand that there are circumstances that people are living with that really minimize their ability to go into a whole food plant-based diet. However, you can buy canned beans like garbanzo beans, red beans, black beans, uh, um, I'm trying to think of some lima beans. You can buy those kind of beans. You can rinse them really well and you can start there. So there is a starting place for virtually everybody. But the big thing is to, to really look at what do you want your health to be like and what do you want your food budget to be like? Because if you look at the price of meat and let's say a pack of T-bone steaks is now like 30 or $40, a five pound tub of uh of hamburger meat, which used to be about $6, $7. It was really inexpensive, is now $30 or $35. If you were to take that money and put it into fresh fruits and vegetables, you were to put it into beans, legumes, lentils, and nuts, you would actually reduce your grocery bill and you would be eating a lot more. And that's another thing about eating a plant-based diet. A lot of people don't realize that they actually have to eat more volume than probably they used to because a lot of foods are very calorie dense, very sugar uh, dense. They have sugar, fat, oil in them. 
And that's one reason we're having a real challenge with obesity. Um, I can go in a number of different directions here, but the main reason for this podcast episode today is to give you some tips on how to reduce your grocery bill. The first thing to do is really look at where your money goes for groceries. Are you buying a lot of packaged foods? Are you buying a lot of processed foods? For example, a bag of potato chips nowadays can be anywhere from four to five dollars. You can buy five pounds of potatoes. And yes, potatoes are good. It's what people put on potatoes that make them fattening, but potatoes are a really good food to eat. You've got sweet potatoes, you've got yams, you've got red potatoes, you've got white potatoes, you've got uh, also golden potatoes, but a five pound bag of potatoes is going to run you four to five dollars, the same price that a bag of potato chips will uh, cost you. Now you do a comparison. How many meals are you going to get out of the bag of potato chips? For some people, that's an entire meal. How many meals can you actually get out of the potatoes? Considerably more. So right there, switching potato chips for potatoes, you can slice your potatoes, you can bake them and you have homemade potato chips. Um, so you want to look at how much you're spending on processed foods, on packaged foods. Uh, for a little serving a little uh, container of, let's say, lean cuisine. I think they're like now $6 because I do cost comparisons just to see how much are prices going up in other foods that I used to eat, but I'm no longer consuming. So $6 for a lean cuisine that is filled with preservatives, it's filled with toxins, it's filled with chemicals, it's filled with cheese, which is not good for you. And you take that same $6, you go over to the vegetable department and you buy cucumbers, you buy uh, tomatoes, which tomatoes are fruit, but you buy avocados, which I think that's a fruit too, but you buy lettuce, you buy greens, you buy bell peppers. You can put $6 into a lot of really good healthy foods and probably get two or three meals out of what you were, add to that the potatoes, what you were spending on the lean cuisine. Now, the thing to really keep in mind is that just calling yourself vegan and saying I'm on the vegan diet is kind of misguided because veganism is a philosophy. It's a way of life. It's about compassion for the animals, and it's also about what we consume. However, eating a whole food plant-based diet and being vegan, the combination of the two is the gold standard of eating. You want to make sure you're getting enough calories. You want to make sure that you are consuming some fats, and that's why your nuts are so important. Your avocados are so important. You want to make sure that you're eating plenty of color and, you know, the reds, the greens, the uh, blues, uh, purples, um, purple cabbage. I love purple cabbage. I put that in my salads. Uh, you can do stir fries, but you can actually reduce your grocery bill by eating a whole food plant based diet. So the planning is. When you go to the grocery store, write yourself a list. Actually write a list of what you need at the grocery store and stick to that list. Start disciplining yourself. That's one way to save. The prep is actually preparing the foods by chopping and uh, slicing and dicing, if you will, and putting like sliced cucumbers in a container, an airtight container, putting in uh, chopped bell peppers, uh, shredded carrots, and having all your food prep done so that when you want to have a meal, it's convenient. One of the reasons that fast food restaurants are so popular is it's exactly that. It's fast, it's easy, it's convenient, but it's deadly. That is a fact of life. And so the more you can prep your food, you cook up some black rice, you cook up some uh, lentils, you cook up some orzo, and you have that available so that when you're ready to have a meal, you can just take the containers out, you can mix up a bowl, you can heat it up, you can add some, uh, what I like to do is I do Dijon mustard with uh, red wine vinegar. I do about a 50-50 mix. I shake it up really well, there's my salad dressing or there's my dressing for potatoes. Um, I would avoid the plant-based butters. I would avoid the uh, processed foods that although they're vegan, like the processed pizza. I went through that for a period of time not too long ago where I was justifying, well, this is vegan. So I'm still a vegan, even though I was eating the vegan pizzas. Very unhealthy. 
And I went through that for a period, was feeling really sluggish again, gave those up and started feeling better. So it's really a matter of being honest and looking at what you're putting into your body. Okay, so you've got the plan, which is your grocery list and really plan out what kind of meals you can cook. The prep, preparing the uh, food so that they're easy to access and you can make a meal very quickly. And the preparation. As you're preparing, what I want you to do is really think about where this food came from, where it's going to go, who's going to enjoy it, and to, if you will, bless it with love. I do that with my foods. I love cooking plant-based meals because I know that people are being nourished by it. I know that no animals were harmed in the process, minimal animals. I There's always the people that say, well, plants have feelings and animals die for plants, uh, like the bugs and the mice and the rodents and all that. And to a degree, that is true. However, they're not bred and live in confined environments only to be slaughtered to end up on my plate. Being a vegan means that we do as little harm to animals as possible. And I'm going to digress here again for, for a moment on uh, cosmetics and hair products. I had somebody on Twitter recently who was slamming me for being a vegan. I mean, it, it, I don't even know who this person is, but apparently I was having a big impact on him. And he said, well, what about your cosmetics? And it was all caps and everything. And I said, well, actually, I check the labels. I make sure that they're not only cruelty-free, but they're vegan because you can have a cruelty-free product that is not vegan. It really kind of boggles my mind. Cruelty-free means there was no animal testing to create the product. Vegan means no animal products were used in the creation of the product. So you want cruelty-free and vegan. That's the ideal for your cosmetics, for your makeup, for any uh, toiletries that you use. And really, it's about living in a more conscious way, living in a way that you know that you're doing as little harm to animals, to your body, and to the environment. So I want you to think in terms of the three Ps, plan, prep, prepare, and really think about the quality of life that you're creating by giving up and letting go of, I should say, animal and dairy, because you're really not giving up anything. You're gaining so much by embracing that way of life. This is Kathleen Gage with Plant-Based Eating for Health podcast show. I encourage you visit my website at veganvisibility.com. That's veganvisibility.com. And go ahead and like this video. If you're watching the video, uh, put a rating for the audio. If you're listening on one of your favorite audio platforms and leave a review. Would love to hear what you think. Would love to hear what kind of shows you want to have me uh, present. And one thing, if you want to be on my podcast show, if you are 100% void of all animal and dairy in your food consumption, and you've lived like that for at least a year, reach out to me. I'd love to talk to you and see if you would be a great fit for either, either my plant-based eating for health show or my vegan visibility show. This is Kathleen Gage wishing you a great day and much health. Thank you for your commitment to an ethical life through plant-based food choices. The kind of choices that are kind to your body, the environment, and most of all, animals. Be sure to leave, sure to leave a review and rating of the Plant-Based Eating for Health podcast show.